Hello, my name is Sekou Lumumba, back again. Thank you guys so much for all the incredible comments I got on the last video showing a typical day in life of us on the road opening for Daughtry. Um, it was my first time making it, as I mentioned, so uh, I was looking for feedback and you guys were very clear that you really do love seeing these aspects that we tend to take for granted um, of what it takes to put a show on each day. So expect more of that. I think the next one we might try and make is something um, showing kind of what a festival day looks like first in the summertime up here. Uh, festivals are considerably different than, than tour show days. So there'll be some different aspects of how we put those things together that I'm looking forward to catching on tape and, and uh, showing you guys. The next video will probably be a drum focus video as I do get a lot of messages and DMs from guys wanting to know about the setup and you know the shell construction and the choices I made with the weird drums and all this stuff. So that will probably be the next one, which I hope to have up um, in the next uh, week or so. Um, so stay tuned. For today, I wanted to talk about something that came up when I was approached last weekend. I, I did a show, a drummer came up to me afterwards, was asking for lessons about my concepts on fills, my feel, and telling me about his frustrations with playing and getting his ideas out. Um, and it made me realize that a lot of people, myself included, suffer from performance anxiety. It's something I've dealt with increasingly as the years have gone on, I'd say for the past 10, maybe 12 years or so. It's gotten better in the last couple of years, and I'll speak to what's changed or what has changed my brain about that. Some brief history on me, I have been a fairly active session drummer up here in Toronto for the last, a rough last 25 years or so. I've done a lot of different things from punk, R&B, EDM, jazz, death metal, polka. I've done just about all of it. And when I started out, I started out very confidently. I, I loved playing, I loved performing in front of people. If I made a mistake, it wasn't the end of the world. It wasn't a big deal. I'm sure I overplayed. I'm sure I played many things too fast. But at the end of the day, I was confident and I felt I was a pretty good drummer. At some point over the years, self-doubt seemed to creep into my playing and my recordings. And a lot of times I would get what they call the red light blues. If you don't know what that is, that's when as soon as you're in the studio, something you've rehearsed a thousand times, as soon as that red light goes on, you freeze up and you get anxious and you get nervous about playing and it feels like you're taking a jump off a cliff when it should be something that you've done in your sleep a thousand times. I think a bunch of different things caused it internally and externally. Externally, I feel like it happened around the prominence of gospel drumming in like, like the late nineties, really. I started seeing all these people who could play all this crazy stuff and all these artists who were totally cool with drummers playing insane fills over the bar line and that just interrupted what was happening vocally. And it made sense and it was musical in a context that I was trying to make happen in my situations. I'm self-taught. Uh, I'm not proud of that. That's just the way it is. It's how I came up. Because of that, I've kind of brute forced my way through a lot of things that I've learned over the years that I'm sure a teacher would have helped me kind of get past or learn a bit more consistently. And I took that into learning to try to play all these flashy things I would see with very middling results, as you can imagine. Then I started noticing that a lot of my contemporaries, a lot of the people who were on the same gigs or taking the same gigs as I was taking, a lot of drummers who I worked around were learning this stuff and learning it really well. Then I'd go over to the metal side, which was my other love, and noticed that guys there were learning these crazy blast beat patterns and these insane, odd time syncopated bass drum parts that were just on a whole other level of anything I was ever used to. So for better or for worse, rather than try and take in all this data or most of it or some of it, it caused me to creatively recede. I would find my lanes and stick to those things rather than trying to grow in any capacity. Never mind trying to ape what they were doing. I just wasn't learning anything. Then came YouTube and social media where you could open your phone and at any given moment find dozens of musicians playing your instrument that you've never heard of before. 10 times better than you do of varying ages, styles, with concepts from other worlds, seeming to pull this stuff off with the greatest of ease. What started to happen to my playing was I started to get 
super critical of everything I played, every groove, every fill, my dynamics, everything. All of a sudden, the entire library of things I could play and implement into a given situation became narrowed down to a very small tool set. I would look back at videos of myself playing and just think, why don't you just play that there? Why did you not remember to do this? Simple ideas that I could do in my sleep, I didn't have access to because I was so anxious about playing like the people I saw online. Now again, please, I'm not taking anything away from some of the incendiary, incredible musicians I see online daily. There are people out there who've spent hours and years working to breathtaking levels of musicality. And like you, I love watching how good some of these people are. My issue is the rate at which we ingest this stuff and how watching dozens, if not hundreds of clips a week of people at their very best in that moment can really have a negative effect on us when we feel stuck or don't feel as creative. So good news and bad news. The bad news is, even though I understand this, this is still something that I deal with on a regular basis. The good news is I deal with it a lot less recently because I made some changes. I'm not saying I have your ticket out. Your mileage may vary depending on where you are in your life and your experiences. But I can give you a couple tips and a very strong start on how to find your voice to getting back to a place where you can play from the heart. The first thing I did was I joined a band. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I have spent the last couple decades specifically not trying to be a part of any one unit. The more streams of income I have, the better for me. That's how it works. For me, by spreading myself so thin over the years, sometimes playing in as many as 11 different projects as one, I was constantly comparing myself to the people that excelled in those different styles of music or those different scenes. By joining a band, something that I have a creative say in, I found myself able to focus on the material. The band has a catalog of music that was recorded before me with other drummers and a bunch of songs that people really like. So my goal was to try my best to recreate that essence when we play live. Focusing on the material instead of focusing on what chops I could bring to a given situation changed so much for me. Suddenly my focus was on supporting music that is great, not on external chops. The second thing I did was I greatly decreased how much time I was spending on social media. I got rid of TikTok. I still have Instagram, but it's not on my phone, so I don't have to look at those suggestions of a litany of guys playing the most ridiculous shit you've ever heard. I still go back and look at that stuff now and then, but I greatly limit how much time I spend on there. Never more than five to 10 minutes tops. 10 minutes is pushing it, to be honest. I limit my time to just a few minutes so that it never becomes something that when I come off my phone, I'm feeling worse about my playing or worse about myself. Listen, that stuff is incredible to watch. But how practical is it? How hireable are you playing some of this stuff? You know what I'm talking about. I spent a lot more time being grateful for the music I was making and I had a lot more ideas that I could bring to the table for new music. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be incredible at your instrument and wanting to be incendiary at different things, learning some crazy fill or groove that makes you a better musician. It makes you better. What I'm talking about specifically is the amount of information we take in that isn't used for learning, that just ends up sitting there making us feel bad about what we can't do and worse about what we can do. I'm just giving you some tips that work for me. I don't know 
what your path is in life. And there are a lot of external and internal factors that will affect how much mileage you have. Because here's something that no one says. A lot of the greats have gone through the same things. And then just add this album, I wanted to kind of capitalize on success. And I went to Jeff's house to write more, more music for a new album. Yeah. But at that time, Jeff really didn't want to play. He just didn't want to, he said, you know what? I lost my confidence. Lost his confidence? Wow. He said, I lost my confidence. Wow. So it happens to us. That's why I think he keeps progressing the way he does. He can lose the confidence. But, then but he, get it back. back. How did he get it back? Because he's a, cause he's, a, he's a champion. Did he just muster it up? Because he's Jeff come, Beck and he's a champion. Happening? And all champions find a way to win. The difference for us is it has become very, very easy for us to compare ourselves against a staggering amount of talent. It happens on social media in regards to beauty, wealth, and varying levels of success. My focus right now is just to talk about how it affects you as a musician and how you can make some slight adjustments to get back to hearing your voice and speaking on your instrument without comparing yourself to the noise that's coming from out there. Anyways, that's all I want to say. You're not alone. It happens to me, it happens to a lot of people. Just be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself, spend less time online looking at that stuff and listen to your voice. And eventually you'll be able to live in a world where you can enjoy both things without comparing yourself to someone else. Hope that helps and uh, we'll talk to you soon.